Moving on for now, the change of guard in two West Asia powers, Israel and Iran, has not changed the status quo between them. Israel's newly sworn in Prime Minister Naftali Bennett opened the coalition government's first cabinet meeting with a condemnation of the newly elected Iranian president, Ibrahim Raisi. Bennett has dubbed Raisi as the hangman of Tehran, while the Tehran's arc foe has Israel lab uh, labeled him the country's most extremist president yet. Now Iran's, this has hailed Raisi's victory and Israel is against reinstating the Iran nuclear deal. It says that Iran will use the pact to develop nuclear arms and in the meeting Bennett said that Iran's presidential election was a sign for the world powers to now wake up before returning to a nuclear agreement with Tehran. The weekend Iran chose a new president, Ibrahim Raisi. Of all the people that Khamenei uh, could have chosen, he chose the hangman of Tehran, the man infamous among Iranians and across the world for leading the uh, death committees, which executed thousands of innocent Iranian citizens throughout the years. Uh, Raisi's selection is, a, I would say, the last chance for the world powers to wake up before returning to the nuclear agreement and to understand who they're doing business with. These guys are murderers, mass murderers. A regime of brutal hangmen must never be allowed to have weapons of mass destruction that will enable it to not to kill thousands but millions. Uh, Israel's position will not change on this. Meanwhile, the nuclear deal talks between negotiators for Iran and six world powers in Vienna have adjourned, but the Iran's top a negotiator and deputy foreign minister Abbas Arakshi has informed that the parties are now closer than ever in, to an agreement and negotiators for Iran and six world powers that is China, France, Germany, Russia, UK and European Union will return to their respective capitals for consultations now since remaining differences cannot be easily overcome. Once again, we're being joined by Sarah Walton from New York. Sarah, thank you so much for staying with us. Now, very strong words here. Now, this cabinet meeting started with condemnation. Bennett has dubbed Raisi as the hangman of Tehran. How do you assess these comments and the status quo between the two? Well, from the point of view of the United States, uh, you know, the, the U.S. is one of the strongest allies of Iran and those comments will be heard at the White House. But, you know, Joe Biden has said time and again, and, and there were comments that were repeated by the National Security Advisor, um, Jake Sullivan, who spoke publicly on some of the morning news programs on Sunday morning in the U.S. The, the, the main aim for the United States when it comes to Iran is to stop the country getting hold of nuclear weapons. Right. And they believe still that the best way to do that is through diplomacy, through the signing of a new uh, nuclear uh, agreement. And the US has said that those talks will continue under the new president, should they still be needed uh, at that point in time. Right. Now, for, thank you for mentioning that, because for now these talks have been adjourned. How do you see these talks now panning out? What do you think will be the impact of this on the nuclear talks between the six world powers now? Well, it's, it's very interesting. The, 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 um, the incoming uh, President Ibrahim Raisi uh, seemed to be a, a far more uh, conservative, hardline hard uh, leader compared to the comparatively moderate uh, regime in place uh, at the moment. And that doesn't necessarily, on the, on the face of it, look like it would lead to a, a deal being done anytime soon. But there are analysts that suggest that it may actually hasten the signing of a new deal. And that's because the incoming administration is going to face increasing pressure to fix the economic situation in Iran, where there has been years of recession and there is increasing unemployment and uh, rising uh, inflation. Uh, hardliners in the country have pointed the finger at moderate uh, leaders that f blaming them for the economic situation, but they won't be able to do that for much longer. In order to fix the economy in Iran, uh, they need to uh, remove the uh, financial sanctions that were put on the country by the US following uh, the US's withdrawal from the, the previous nuclear agreement in 2018. Uh, okay. To do that, the Iran needs to sign a new nuclear an agreement. Okay. And it may be 
that um, with a change of power coming in in just a few months' time, the new administration would like that to happen sooner rather than later so they can blame their predecessors for doing a deal and also blame their predecessors for anything that may go wrong with that deal in the future. All right, Sarah. Thank you so much for all your inputs on that. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.